Now, before I get accused any, of anything, I'm going to start the video with this disclaimer to let everybody know my train of thought and how consistent I have been on what I'm going to say. When John David Jackson and Kovalev parted ways, I made videos about John David Jackson threatening to go over to Team Andre Ward and give a whole load of secrets away on Kovalev. I'm saying you can't trust people like this. He's a rat. I also made a video a few months back why Deontay Wilder got rid of Mark Breland. Because after the first Tyson Fury fight, he went over to, is it Laugh Now? A boxing channel that doesn't upload much these days. And he was telling the host how Deontay Wilder doesn't listen and how he doesn't do this and doesn't do that. And then he went back to the camp. And I'm thinking, well, that is disloyal. That's disloyal. So I can understand why Wilder, when something didn't go right for Wilder, got rid of him and got upset. And he's perhaps thinking, is he a double agent? In saying that, if Wilder did believe all this, he should have got rid of him. A long time ago and not reinstated him. And in saying that, if Breland didn't see Wilder training, running and doing the things he was supposed to... He should have went as well. This relationship should have parted ways amicably. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do in either Breland or Wilder's eyes, well, split and part. I ask myself, how comes Mark Breland hasn't trained any other fighters? The only one he has is Deontay Wilder. Even as a financial incentive or he just loves Deontay Wilder. He just loves being around a man who is not listening to him. I made a video saying he should defend himself against the allegations that Wilder was making. But all this, Wilder doesn't train, he doesn't do this and do that. I don't think he's realising it makes him look bad if you were overseeing all this mediocrity and now you want to make a deal of it. He looks just as bad as Wilder. I always try and avoid doing that. You know when friendships or relationships go wrong, all of a sudden, all the stuff you was tolerating is now a problem. I always try and avoid doing that. Strange guy. Mark Breland, in all truth, you know, when Wilder sacked him first time, why did you go back? For what, exactly? Why did you go on that YouTube channel saying Wilder doesn't listen and then go back to the camp? You know, he must have put himself out of favour a little bit. I don't know why Wilder didn't get rid of him straight away. Maybe he had his uses in the camp. And I know everything Wilder said. I'm just compartmentalising. I've really blasted him for his liability in the relationship between him and Breland. And I've blasted him several times about how he's reacted to that defeat. I know it's fun listening to a broken record if it's saying something you really want to hear. I'm just saying now, Breland is acting very weaselly. And we all know Wilder's done some bullcrap talking about Mark Spike the Water, Mark Anthony Durrell. Yeah, we know it already. Wilder locked him outside the dressing room and whatnot. We know it all. I just can't work Breland out crying outside the changing room. What the hell is that? All of a sudden now, he can't beat Tyson Fury. Well, that's not what you were saying in camp with Deontay Wilder. You were saying he could beat him. And there it is there. See, to me, all he has to do is stick to the facts about what he didn't do with the water. Defend himself for stopping the fight. That he did it for Wilder's best interest. Protect yourself on the stuff that you're being accused of. All this, you know, you're going to blow Wilder up now. It's ridiculous. Now he's claiming he could have beat most of Wilder's opponents, apparently. This is a man who couldn't take Jorge Vaca's power or Marlon Starling. Marlon Starling, I, listen, I know this boxing thing, man. Marlon Starling is more of a counter-puncher than a walk-you-down type. He's talking about Wilder ain't got a jab, Joshua's jab ain't got no pop. Well, I see Marlon Starling walk Breland down and walk through his jab. And so did Aaron Davis. And so did Jorge Vaca. And I don't know what makes him think that he had a better career than AJ. I don't know how he's concluding that in his head. And he said he could beat Anthony Joshua. If Joshua is so crap like Mark Breland is saying and Andre Ward, why didn't Wilder just take the 120 million and knock him out for undisputed and become the cash cow of boxing? Because you know Joshua is the cash cow. Yeah, I know you don't want to do the research, shoot the fifth, yeah? But you told me the last time that Canelo got a near $70 million purse. Stop it. Joshua's the cash cow. Breland want to talk about the jab. Let's talk about that jab I saw you take from Aaron Davis. Aaron Davis had a good jab that split open his nose. It was just gushing blood. If 
for the fight. He was swallowing blood. Breland's jab was effective at a certain level. I mean, what was his reach? 77 inch? And he was a welterweight. So at a certain level, it was effective. But against top level guys, nah, nah. His best win is against Lloyd Hunnigan. Hunnigan was a bit past his best, but it's a, it was a good win. And Rafael Pineda, that was a good win. But he doesn't have no stellar career. I don't know why he's talking like that. He has a good career. See, this is when you've got to put things in perspective. I've always gave him credit, but he wasn't one of the better American fighters in his day. He wasn't. He wasn't. His career was looked on by the American media as a flop, to be honest, because he was supposed to do so much more. If you look at his amateur record, gold medalist, he was supposed to do so much more than what he did. So it was a good career. But if he's going to be coming out talking like, you know, yeah, I can best all these guys heavyweight today. No, you sound ridiculous. For anyone who used to watch boxing back in the day, you sound like a crazy person. If you used to read the magazines back in the day, they used to talk about a certain sect of New York fighters in the 90s, overhyped. And his name used to come up, and so did Shannon Briggs. And there's a few more I can't remember off the top right now. I want to see Andre Ward fight Anthony Joshua. Are you going to throw them nut shots like he did against Kovalev? <laughs> oh, dear. AJ already has a way higher knockout percentage than Andre Ward. Who's fighting nothing but super middleweights and light heavyweights? He got one stoppage I recognize over a recognizable name. One. And Chad Dawson. Chad Dawson and Kovalev. There is two main stoppages. And before you say, oh, you're only saying that because of AJ, listen, you can go to my post-fight video of the first Kovalev fight. He lost that fight, and I said so. And before he started talking crap about Joshua, I've been saying he ducked to Donnie Stevenson to go for undisputed. He ducked him. I haven't seen the whole of the Breland interview, but I heard he threw shots at Tyson Fury as well. And, like, you see, this is where you lose points. Why you, your friend shots at... Fury, Joshua, when they're fighting for Undisputed. But you lose points when you're now telling us that Joshua can't do this, can't do that. You can beat Joshua. You can beat Wilder's opponents. You look like a crazy person rather than someone trying to get some respect put back on your name. You look like a bit of a crazy person. I won't be too harsh because he's all in his feelings and I can understand why. I can understand why, in all truth. But if I'm truthful, I can understand why Wilder don't want to be around him either. Seems like a bit of a weasel. Just being real. Wilder replied on 78 Sports TV saying, I'm glad I'm not going to die broke. Subliminally firing a shot at Breland saying Breland is broke. He, Breland's probably jealous of Wilder's career because Breland's career was relatively short. And maybe that's why Breland's coming out firing right now. His pocket's hurting him. Maybe. He said Wilder's career's done. Well, we could segue into that, I'm guessing. What's happening with the Charles Martin fight? Is Wilder pricing himself out like everybody's saying? Well, the truth is, taking a mediocre purse for Wilder would really be like him having to come to terms that he did lose that fight with Tyson Fury. Wilder still hasn't recovered from the Tyson Fury fight. And I'm not even talking about physically. I don't know what state he is in physically. I haven't, I haven't got a clue, but I'm talking mentally. He hasn't recovered. We're nearly coming up to a year to when he lost to Tyson Fury. He's too emotionally impacted by Tyson Fury to fight anybody with a pulse. He's got to be focused on Charles Martin, like develop some real competitive animosity that he wants to hurt him. Because if Charles Martin can just get in the zone, he has a great chance of beating Wilder. But if Wilder can really compartmentalize the Fury fight, then it'll probably get to Charles Martin. But right now, you can't put Wilder in with any ranked opponents. Not at this moment here. This is no way. You see, Teofimo Lopez, as young as he is, he is knowledgeable to know that, look, you're acting like a bitch. And here's the thing, other fighters are going to see that. That's why you hear F.A. Ajagba talking like he was talking about knocking Wilder out. He wants him next. He wants all the smoke. And a lot of fighters, after seeing Wilder act like a child at times, are going to get emboldened and want to shut his mouth. Now, whether they can or not, it's two different things. But how you carry yourself outside the ring is important. You know, how your potential opponents view you. You know, if they see you acting like a little girl and stuff, yeah, they want to knock you off. You give them a more steely resolution. 
that you've got a weak mental character. You don't want to do that. A lot of fighters are viewing Wilder as a damaged fighter right now. That's how they're looking at him. He may not even know this yet, but that's how they're looking at him. Some people said now Wilder hasn't got a belt that he's going to be avoided. No, I see it the other way. He's going to get called out quite a lot right now after what people have seen from last February, a year back, and he hasn't got over it. There's going to be a lot of coaches and trainers who are going to want that fight. The reason fighters back in the day are so great is they didn't have the temperamental egos that the fighters today have. Like Sugar Ray Robinson lost to guys like Ralph Tiger Jones. Decent fighter, let's say fringe contender, gatekeeper level. Ray wasn't like, oh, I got beaten by a gatekeeper. I need therapy and a sports psychologist. No, he got back in the ring in a couple of months and got back on it. That's why they're great. Their egos weren't impacted by defeats like that. What's the reality? Like, um, there are no big purses for him right now with Fury and AJ locked up in a two-fight deal. The expiry date on the third fight with Fury ran out. A pay cut is inevitable, you would have thought. And not accepting a pay cut is perhaps telling us he's not ready to fight. He doesn't want to fight. Take your pick.